Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, good everything. Um, scene one, take three. Now, I've already started this one two times, and both times I messed up my tendril. Because, see, I don't do tutorials because of this very reason right here. I usually just show you what I'm doing, and that's it. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And I might show you some uh, bullion tendril, but I'm not sure that that's going to be possible. But right now, what I'm, what I'm using is this piece of fabric. This piece of fabric was on a bubble wrap envelope that was sent to me in Happy Mail. And Miss Carmen put this fabric on the front of the envelope. And, but she had sewn scraps all the way around like a little frame. Then she took paper in the center and she wrote my address on there. And then she laid that on the front of the, the envelope and she taped the whole thing down with packing tape. Clear packing tape. So I could see, I could see this fabric. I said, oh, I got to see if I can get that out of there. So I just went like a coal miner's daughter and I went in there and I pulled that apart and I rescued, I was on a rescue mission. And I rescued this piece of fabric. Then I said, well, Miss Carmen is my sunshine. I said, you are my sunshine. And so I made, using wool roving, then I needle felted this wool roving down. First I put the blues there. Well, that she sent me this felting stuff, this needle roving. She sent me, sent me some. So I, um, I said, this is absolutely wonderful. And so... I made the sunshine on there. Then I thought, okay, it needs more than just the sunshine. So then I added, like right here, I put on three um, um, yo-yos. I put the three yo-yos on there. I overlap them. I like them overlapped a little bit and of different colors. I like that. And then I put each of them a button in the center. And then I put some little beads on there just for some extra fun. And then I made these three little, just, I just took pieces of this yarn here and I just kind of rolled them up around my finger a little bit. I made three of them and I needle felted them down and they needle felted just fine. And then here was a little um, flower. I put that on there and some three beads in the middle. And then around the edges, I put some, to, some cause some of the little pieces, I didn't want to cover them up with the felt and up uh, with the, um, wool so I tucked wool under and then I was able to pull those little pieces of scrap over and then and then tack them down with a French knot and I did that a few places around and then like right here I put just a few little beads right there some little blue beads and I had just laying on my on my um, table here I'd had this little, little scrap of fabrics got some little cows on it well it had this one little piece of a cow and I said, oh, that one looks cute. Looks like he'll just be peeking out the corner. And so I just stitched him on there. And then Raggedy Andy was already on there. And he's running this way. And this cow is saying, well, I'm going to catch him. And so he's going to go try and catch him. So he'll keep running. And um, now this, they already say this. This is, um, I made a little video a day or two ago where I showed how I was learning to make yarn buttons. And, but this is, this is a yarn, this started as like a yarn button, but it, I made it only this big and left a big hole in the middle. See, this is a yarn button too, but it's like bigger than a button. And, um, but this is how you're supposed to keep going till you actually close up that middle. Looks like little bunt cakes, doesn't it? Or like a little bunt cake. That's what somebody told me in the in the um, comment section is that it looks like a little bunt cake and it does so cute. And um, but I so I started this one and I just went around and I didn't go to close up the middle. I just left it this size and then I actually felted it right to this middle of this sunshine. See, because when you make these, you get this little edge on there because you make them with a single crochet. And so then that little edge there is that single crochet. And that's what how I felted it to this 
sunshine is felting it on that single crochet that goes around. And the, I have this this one yarn here, so pretty. It's very um, soft, in it, but I could see, you can see on that felt, you, on that yarn, you can see them fibers, how there's so many fibers on this yarn. And so when I saw that, I said, that yarn's going to felt. I just know that will. Okay, so, and then, well, I put this flower on, and my intention is to put bullion tendrils around, around um, this flower. So I want to try this. Now, I have started this video, this is the third time. For the first time I did it wrong, second time I did it wrong. And so this is take three. Scene one, take three. It, three strikes and you're out, though. So if I don't get it this time, I am done for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke that needle up through the middle. Okay, there. And I'm going to pull that thread on through. Okay, so I have a knot back there. So that's going to hold that. And then I want my tendril to be about an inch long here. So I'm going to go out an inch. And put that needle back in that inch and then poke it back up through that middle in that same spot but I'm not going to pull my needle all the way through that's where I messed up on say take two I pulled it all the way through okay I'm not going to pull that needle all the way through I'm just going to pull it till it's sticking out this is a Milner's needle um, it's a Milner's size one needle these needles a Milner's needle I have learned just recently is a a long needle and the shank of the needle is the same thickness or circumference as the shank of the eye and so that's what you need when you when you do something like this you need that kind of a needle you can use another needle if, if the eye isn't real big and chunky okay so now i have that needle just poking up through the middle and now the, the thread that's poking up through the middle, I'm going to start wrapping that. And I'm going to just continue wrapping. And I'm wrapping it kind of tight, but I'm not pulling it real tight because if you pull it too tight, then when you try to pull the needle through, it ain't going to go nowhere. It'll be stuck there for life. And so I'm just wrap and wrap and wrap that thread around that needle. Now, sometimes if somebody is going to do a bunch of tendrils, then you kind of might want to count them and do 100 wraps or whatever and make sure your all your wraps are the same size. But I'm not into that kind of perfection stuff, and I lose count anyway. So I'm going to pull it. I'm, I'm just going to look, and I'm going to see, well, there's about an, as many wraps right there as that will fit from here to here to make my one inch my one inch tendril and I'm gonna put a little bit more on there okay now this is where on scene one take one I messed up okay here now I'm getting that needle pulled through kind of holding on to where this thread is here and I'm getting that now the needle is all the way through. And so I'm going to pull down a on these wraps, and I'm pulling them down, and, and I'm pulling them, actually pulling them off of the needle. So they're going off of the needle and onto the thread. Ooh, I got them off. So now there is, there's all them wraps. They're no longer on the needle. Now they're just on the thread. So I'm going to continue now, pull my thread and my needle up and get that completely. Please come through. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pull this right here. Hopefully I don't have a trouble. that through okay now I got that thread and gently I'm trying to be gentle here with this and I'm pulling 
pulling that thread Mm-hmm. Now, oh, I see. It had a little wiggle there. It had a wrinkle. Now, I just see, you can't see what I'm doing because my big old hands. Now, I pulled that thread now all the way through. So then that's the tendril. So I will, um, now I'm going to go with my needle and go back down at that end of that one inch piece that I, at the end of that tendril. I think I'm having a little bit more trouble on this one because I'm, I'm going through this wool roving and it's got all the little fibers things and wool roving, the, the threads of the roving of the, the, the hairs of the stuff has got almost like little, um, like fish scales on it. If you looked at it through a microscope, you would see there's like little fish scales. And when you're roving, when you're felting, those scales actually um, hook together. Okay, so then I have, now I'm going to make just a knot here. You don't really have to make a knot, but I do make a knot. That, just right down there before I start another one. So then that holds that one tight and it's in there. So then, now I can go back up through and come back up again through that center. I'm going to come back up through that center and see if I can do this twice. And, um, because I got enough thread on there still to do another tendril. So I've got that through there. Now I'm going to, now this one I want to come out over a way, so... About the same length, but over ways. So I'm going to put that needle into there and pull it, poke it out in the in the center, right there. Don't pull it all the way through. And now I'm going to start wrapping again. And I'm just going to wrap. Fill up that needle is what I'm doing. Now, like I say, you can count them if you want to, to try to get them all exactly the same, but I'm not into all of that stuff. There's no OCD about this woman here. And nowhere. And so I'm just getting that needle wrapped. And, like, wrapping it tight but not so tight that you can't get it you know it needs to be sort of tight but not so doggone tight that you can't um get the thread off the needle okay let's see if we can try and do this correctly okay so i think i'm gonna let that be that much now i'm gonna pull that needle I'm, now I'm pulling it through, so the eye of the needle will come through there at the base, and I'm going to work those loops, those wraps, off of the needle, so they go come off of the needle, and they're wrapping around that thread that's pulling through. So I'll get all them wraps off of this needle. Okay, the needle will be free and on parole. Okay, let's see. And I'm just continuing to get those wraps down. Okay, now all those wraps are on the thread. They're off the needle and on the thread. So now I'm going to continue to pull that needle and just kind of hold on to the wraps a little bit just so they don't go jumping all over the place. And I'm just going to, oh, that one's going better than the last one. And there I go, and there it went. Now I've got that second tendril. Now I'll th put that thread right down in the center uh, at the end of the tendril. And there is that second tendril on there. And so there, now that one went good. I'm happy about that. Now my tendrils are not, now if you look at an expert do this, and there are some experts that do this. 
when you see the expert do them, these little tendrils will be all nice and smooth. Now, mine aren't all nice and smooth. Mine are kind of lumpy because I like lumpy tendrils. That's what I say. But see how that those tendrils are? Let's see. Do I have enough? I don't know if I have enough thread to do a third one. But see, now I can go up here. Because what I like to do is go around with... First time you come through the center, you pull it through. Then you go back out where you want the end of your tendril to live. And then put that needle back through. But don't put it through all the way. And that's when you start wrapping. I might not be able to make a very big tendril. This might not be enough thread. And so, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap what I have and see what it does. And so I'm just a wrapping, just a wrapping. I am a wrapper. I'm a wrapping. Wrap the thread. Then you wrap the thread. Then you wrap the thread all around your head. The red thread around your head. Don't wrap it around your head. Wrap it around a needle. Elizabeth. Okay. And so, yeah, my thread's kind of there. Okay, so that's about as much as I can do on that one because my thread's coming a loose. And then we go and we're pulling it off the needle. Getting the wraps off the needle. Now we're pulling the thread. Pulling what's left of the thread. Okay, so this tendril isn't going to be as long as I. It's long enough though. See, now I'll pull it through. I mean, it's as long as the other one. It just might not be as wrapped as well as the other one. So there, now I got three. See, there's three tendr tendrils on there. Now I'll have to put more thread on, but I won't bore you with that. Um, but I am going to just tie that off right there so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. And so that's, what, and I'm going to go around it with maybe, maybe about four or five more tendrils around this to finish that off. And what I might even do is like when I get over here, I might pull the needle up. I might pull the needle up right here in 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 like in between those two right there and then my tendril will come around like this and they more almost look like they're kind of overlapped and then that's real pretty and and you can use any kind of a thread i want to i i want to see if they have this kind of thread in like a um like a multi-colors instead of just one color because i love things in multicolor. So I'm going to do a little search, I think, and see if I can find that multicolored thread. And Because I love multicolors. I might even do the other tendrils in a different color. Maybe I'll do them in this violet, in this lavender color. Because I still have lavender. What do I have? And I got this here like a rose color. And I have this is like a silver gray. And then I have this, which is black. And this is brown. And this is an, another one of the silver gray ones. So I have a lot that I can use. So I could actually, I have one, two, three, four, five, six colors all together. Because this one, I, I take them off of here and then I wrap them onto these bobbins. And um, this is so pretty. So, so pretty. Okay, but anyway, but I'm going to leave it at that for now, just this, because I just wanted to do this, and I'll finish these, and then and then I'll probably do more on it, but I don't know what I'll do, because it's just, a, this is spirit stitching, so I have to wait to let my spirit tell me what I'm going to do next, but that's as far as I got on that one so far, so now I'm going to, um, as always, now this is another one of these books, um, the, from the Salsian collections. This one is Passages of Peace. The other one I have is something else. And so I'm going to just open. Oh, I love the pictures in here. I just love the pictures.
pictures in these books. I open this one up to say friendship. And it says, I asked the Lord to show me faith, and he led me to you. A Christian song, a Christian strong with kindness pure that shows in all you do. I asked the Lord to give me hope, and once again I found the life you live. A testament in patient. My tongue, I'm ha my tongue is wrapping around my eye teeth and I can't see what I'm saying. I'm going to start that over. Excuse me. Friendship. I ask the Lord to show me faith and he led me to you. A Christian strong with kindness pure that shows in all you do. I ask the Lord to give me hope and once again I found a life you live, a testament, the life you live a testament in patience, hope abounds. I ask the Lord to show me love as he meant it to be. And I saw that love, I saw love that pure and true in your life plentifully. So now I think of you each day in every trial I face. I meditate on your strong faith and hold the hand of grace. I have the hope that once was lost, for now I see his love that's true and pure and ever near from heaven's heights above. That was written by Linda Bryan Davis. I'll have to read that again because sometimes I read things that I have to read it two or three times before it sinks into my head. One here, and here it says from Psalms 27.4, One thing I ask of the Lord, this, this I seek, to dwell in the Lord's house all the days of my life, to gaze on the Lord's beauty, to visit his temple. And you know where the Lord's temple is? Right here. Look in this picture where this lovely girl is clipping flowers and getting a basket of flowers. All these beautiful flowers, the tree, the sky with the clouds up in there. Over here, the little animals in the forest, the little rabbits are there. And you know, this is the Lord's beauty. This is what it is. And for you all, and you know what I decided yesterday when I found the second book? I said, you know what? Look at in this book how much white space is around these images, uh, these poems. I am going to use this book as a journal. Look how many places places I've got to write. And a lot of times I might be re reading one of these. And when I read one of these, it brings me to mind of a memory or a person or a thought. And so why don't I write that memory or uh, that person or that thought right in this book and make this because look at all the white space there is a lot of white space to write and that is what I'm going to do with this book now on this one there's a couple pages out of it already they've been torn out and put here and um, I thought when I got that other one, I thought I had bought more than one, and I did because I had two that I had found in, um, oh, this one is the 44th volume, so there must be a lot of these out there. And, um, oh, and then I did read two in this one, is, Is, um, here it says, the intent and purpose of this volume is to give you faith, hope, and inspiration. Hopefully it will bring peace and tranquility into your life. May it be a, remind, a reminder of God's love, guidance, and his many blessings. Our publications help to support our work for needy children in over 130 countries around the world. Through our programs, thousands of children are fed, clothed, educated, shelters, sheltered and given the opportunity to live decent lives. When was this one written? Oh, this one was written in 2006. So, and like it says, this is the 44th volume. So, and that was in 06. So now it's 22. So there's probably a whole lot, even more of these. Here's a whole list 
of names of these. But I was wondering what the cells in missions is because I hadn't heard about them. And um, now that I have these two books, I have two of these books. Look how pretty that cover is, salt purple. But anyhow, I'm going to enjoy this. And like I say, I'm going to use this for a, a journal. So anyhow, um, a lot of people won't write in books, but I don't mind. I write in books. They're my books. I write in them. Okay, I ask God to watch over you. Every step you take, every move you make. Keep you safe, keep you happy, keep you healthy and smiling, keep you humble. And I will see you on the next video. God bless. Love you to pieces.